From News Channel 8, this is Federal News Today. We have much more to come on tonight's edition of Federal News Today. Problems at the polls, electronic voting machines, a shortage of poll workers. What should we expect to see in November? A researcher at American University says if the midterm elections were held tomorrow, the GOP would be in trouble. A university study shows only 15 percent of eligible voters participated in this year's primaries, a record low. And the study suggests that frustrations with the Iraq war and outrage over the Foley scandal could mobilize Democrats and independents at the polls while reducing Republican turnout. This November, more voters than ever will be using new electronic voting machines. But the reliability of the machines and other problems at the polls have many wondering if this year's elections will turn out to be a debacle. Joining us now to talk about the November vote is Penda Hare. She's a co-director at Advancement Project, a public interest group focused on democracy and social justice. And Penda, thanks for joining us. You know, we saw a lot of problems last month in the Maryland primary. Huge, Did we ever, yes. huge, huge problems. How worried are you about November? We're very worried at Advancement Project, and we are working very hard now to try to convince election officials to take steps to prevent the kind of meltdown at the general election that we saw in the primary, not just in Maryland, which was a couple of weeks ago, but in the spring in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in Cleveland, Ohio, and in many places across the country. And with the higher turnout that's expected for the general election, if these polling place problems are not addressed before the election, there really could be chaos. And speaking of chaos, can you think of an example of what we could see on a scale reaching across the country in a worst case scenario? Well, what we are worried about is that the job of poll worker has become so complicated and poll workers have to make a lot of quick decisions. Do you, what kind of ID does the voter have to show? Do you vote a regular ballot or a paper ballot or a provisional ballot? Can you change the, the uh, paper in the machine? And what we saw in primaries is that voters were turned away because they couldn't operate the machines, the, the polling places couldn't uh, process the voters, and the voters just couldn't stay around and wait until they fix things. And that that could happen on a rather large scale, we think. What do you think has to be done, or what would you like to see done? Well, we want uh, poll workers trained on how to use this equipment. A lot of what we're seeing is new equipment that poll workers do not know how to operate. Mm -hmm. And they, we are. Uh, uh, a uh, staff member in Philadelphia went to the election poll worker training and it was 17 minutes. And that is just not enough time. And even the two or three hours that most jurisdictions do, it's not enough time to learn how to do all of these complicated things that poll workers who are heroes of democracy are faced with these days. Are there just not enough poll workers? That's another problem. There's an um, um, estimate that we need as many as half a million poll workers that are not yet identified. So those of you who are out there, volunteer to be a poll worker. It's a hard job, but you'll, be, you'll feel good at the end of the day. Now, what, are, what would you consider are the top problems in this specific, in the Washington metro region? Are there any problems other than what happened in Maryland that you are particularly concerned well, about? Well, we have a real concern with Maryland because they have rejected over 8,000 voter registrations that we know that nonpartisan groups have assisted voters to try to register because of a database problem uh, with matching those voters mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the Social Security database. And we're call Advancement Project is calling on Maryland to let those people vote if they come to the polls and bring an ID. So we are hopeful we can resolve that with the state of Maryland before the election. Otherwise, that's a large number of voters who have tried and are eligible and won't be allowed to vote. What role does the federal government have in seeing that there are improvements made? States control their, their voting procedures. What's the role of the federal government in this situation? Well, the Congress has appropriated a lot of new money for, and it's been spent mostly on election machines, and we believe that Congress should insist on fixing the other parts of the voting apparatus because you put in new machines, but the rest of the system is old. You may have a situation that's worse than before. Uh huh. And we didn't even get to talking mm -hmm. about people who are worried about election machines being hacked into. Well, that's <laughs> another problem, and I'm not an IT person, but I know that my my computer sometimes shuts down, and we had a lot of those problems in Maryland this past uh, election. All right. Penda Hare, co-director of the Advancement Project, thank you very much for being here tonight. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate it.